So I made it out here to the outskirts of LA and I'm here to pick up a new truck. It's a 96 Dodge 1500. It's on a big lift kit. It's, uh, it's one of my dad's old trucks. He bought it, he got it a couple, like probably five or 10 years ago. And it's just been sitting out here and unfortunately he passed away so it's just been sitting. So I really needed a truck and my stepmom was kind enough to give it to me. So drove 500 miles out here to take a look at it and There it is, it's the Dodge. That's the one we're getting. It's really, really windy out here, so I'm gonna stay I'm gonna stick into the shop right here and talk about it for a while. It's got a pretty big lift on it. I can't tell, I think maybe a four or six inch lift on it, plus it's got a two inch body lift. The uh, bumpers are crooked because the guy cut them off and re-welded them back on crooked. And uh, it's sitting crooked right now, it's got flat tires, so. I really didn't know what to expect coming all the way out here to look at this truck. I uh, showed you guys a picture of it uh, before I left and it was in pretty good condition. But uh, it seems like I took I probably took that picture four years ago um, when we were talking about maybe picking this truck up. So um, now that I'm finally out here, the headliner's falling down. It's full of dirt. Uh, I, I don't know if it's even going to start. I think the battery's toasted. Um, needs an oil change. I don't know if it had a bed on it. It's missing the tailgate. Let's see. Definitely is gonna need definitely gonna need some wheels and tires. So I think it's gonna be cheaper just to buy a set of wheels and tires off of like Facebook or something. Uh, five hundred bucks, you know, get some thirty fives. So I think the first thing I think the first thing I'm gonna do is try and get it to start, and uh, we'll see what the battery looks like. See if we can get it to start. We'll go from there. set my tool bag down. battery in there. Let's see. Got the new battery. Let's see if we can get her to fire up. Gotta keep an eye out for snakes out here. See if it fires up. It says it ain't got no gas. I believe it. It's probably gonna die on me. Oh, it's warm in here. Power windows work. Yeah, power windows, power mirrors, power locks. Can't see my focus. Okay. Okay, this thing's probably stuck. Let's see here. Wonder if I can get four wheel drive. Oh, it's in four wheel drive. Seems like the uh, mass airflow sensor computer is not wanting it to idle. So I'm just going to hold my foot on the brakes, kind of keeping it alive right now. See if we can get it to come out of this hole. And there it goes. Yeah. Let's 
see if I can swing it wide. Come back around, maybe. They're all kind of project shit out here. My dad's old boats. Man, I used to have a lot of fun in that, that yellow thing when I was a kid. Time flies. Alright, let's see. Back okay. As long as we don't hit that uh, sand rail back there. Okay, that's good. Looks like my uh, gauge indicator doesn't read right. I'm in drive, it says it looks like I'm in second. Okay, get her up to the door here. I guarantee this truck's way too big to go in the shop, but uh, oh, it almost died. Yeah, let it idle for a minute, let the oil warm up so it'll drain easier. All right, let's see. No snakes. Maybe no snakes, as long as I'm not getting I'm a little in the shade here, but. So, regular job, it looks like. Extended bed. Side exhaust. Oh man, it's so windy out here. <clears throat> See if I can hop in here. Get out of the wind. There it is. I really doubt. <laughs> I really doubt it'll fit through that doorway. There she is. Let it warm up for a minute. Get the oil a little, uh, little, little runnier, so it drains easier. Got my drain pan, and I uh, got some oil in the passenger seat for it. Pretty sweet truck, I mean, apart from, I mean, it's got a lift kit, it's been sitting for 10 years, so it probably has death wobble. It sure should be fun. So got the oil change all finished. It's running good, warmed up a little bit. We had it running for a minute. I'm gonna pull it around to the uh, the front of the house, get it on some concrete, and uh, let's see if the wheels fit. Doggies, they're going crazy. I don't think you can see them. They're going, they go crazy all day long. Barking at everything. All right. There's my dad's old truck, big orange. See if I can fit her up right here, and uh, now that we got it up on some concrete, we'll jack it up, check the uh, check the brakes, check the wheels, go from there. Oh, killed it! It's pretty clean. I've already pulled the back seat and everything, and 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 vacuumed it out. This thing's been sitting on my dad's property. Um, for five years the inside was full uh, inch of dust so it's real dusty it's real windy outside 
it's really windy outside so I'm gonna go outside and, and I'll do some outside shots of the car and um, and and what we're gonna do with it and uh, hopefully you can hear I don't know how bad the wind noise is gonna be so we'll pop outside and take a look at it okay here we are There's that back seat. So this is how I pulled it out of the weeds. It's got a flat tire, 96, long bed. It's got a body lift. Let's see, it's got an exhaust right here. Let's see, can we see the little donuts that it's got? So it looks like maybe you can see a donut back there. Hockey puck, I, I don't know. They're just real big bushings, it looks like. And then it had some bracketry back here, but I'm not sure what for. And then, uh, so, oh, here's another big body donut. So, it's got a body lift, and then it's got this front lift, pro comp shock, coilover spring, with these uh, trailing arms. I have no idea what any of this is, if it's any good, or... Um, but it sure looks cool. It's got limiting straps. They're probably all dry rotted out. Um, I have no clue. It's got headers. Got some headers right there, we can see. But like I said, I don't know if this has any swapped axles or anything like that. I think it's all original. It's four-wheel drive. Can we see down here? I believe it's a 5.9 V8. Let's pop the hood and see what it looks like under there. I have no idea what you can or cannot see. I can't even tell if it's focusing. Damn it. Okay, so here's our motor. I believe it's a 5.2 or a 5.9. There's the little O'Reilly battery I bought. Got a K&N, like a cold air intake on it. Goes to this box. Got some sort of, like a throttle plate. air vortex spinning throttle plate. I don't know. I don't believe in none of that stuff. But then uh, other than that, I believe it's got maybe like a, a coil. It's got coil wires and uh, headers. So she should be pretty sweet. I just got back from Santa Clarita. Picked up these wheels off of Facebook. These are uh, looks like some Pro Comp wheels and some BF Goodrich. What do they say? Mud Terrain. TA tires. I got five of them. The guy owned a Jeep, so he had one. He had a spare on the back, and they came with lug nuts. Luckily, so I'm gonna swap those. I got this. This tire dead. They're all pretty. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they're all pretty dry rotted. I'm gonna drive this truck from. LA to Reno, so that's about 600 miles. So I don't want to risk it. Went ahead and got some wheels. So we'll go ahead and jack this thing up and swap the wheels out. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Alright, so I got the wheel off. So over here, this is the one that was flat. Got my nice new set of wheels. These are some Pro Comp. Aluminum wheels sure do look nice. I don't I don't know if they're nice and expensive wheels or not, but they sure do look nice. These came off of some guy's Jeep. He's had a set of five of them. I was able to pick them up pretty cheap. I think I paid 600 bucks. And they got 35s on them, all new BF Goodrich tire. The only problem is uh, I made a mistake when I did my research on the internet. That's the lug pattern for the Dodge. That's the lug pattern for the Jeep. Now I thought they were the same, but the internet uh, kind of screwed me over. So these are actually five by four and a half. And all you Dodge guys, I'm sure you know those, the truck is five by five and a half. So I did the bad thing. And instead of buying new wheels, I bought spacer adapters. These are one inch uh, aluminum. 
five on five and a half to five on four and a half. These are M12 threads and these are half inch threads. So I had to go buy new lug nuts. But uh, now with this, I should be able to get this nice set of wheels on the truck and take it out for a test drive. So stay tuned for that. All right, so sorry for the wind noise, you guys. It's really windy out here. So for this job, I got some uh, Acorn open-ended half-inch nuts because the truck is half-inch thread. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this wheel spacer down first, as tight as I can get it. About, I don't know, what, 120 foot-pounds is what this truck probably calls for. 80 to 100 foot-pounds. So we'll get those on and tighten, and then we'll put the wheel on. Okay, so now I got the wheel spacer on fully. I had an issue with this particular wheel. Well, I guess this particular vehicle. Uh, the studs were slightly too long, so a uh, nice sharp metal file and a dead elbow later. And I was able to get those trimmed down, use this uh, straight edge to make sure they don't protrude. Before they were, they were poking out just a little bit and my wheels don't have clearance for that. So I was able to, had to make sure to cut those down just in case. So got those shaved, gonna go ahead and put the wheel on now. All right, again, sorry for the wind, but uh, this is how those spacers come, straight from, uh, straight from Amazon. So there's one. So that's what that looks like straight out of the box. Here's our little, uh, some packing foam. So anyway, they're really nice. Um, definitely not something to, to go four-wheeling with or nothing crazy off-road, but more or less, we're just trying to get this thing to make it all the way back a uh, 500 mile trip. So, I need to now, I was going to show you, I got the spacer I can slip her on. And with the spacer on, it's really hard to tell. It might not even do it on this side, but on the other side, the studs were sticking out just a tad. So, I'm going to go ahead and clean these ones up too and get this one bolted down. Okay, there's a finished product with the uh, new wheels put on it. Oh, it's really shady over here. Damn. Sure looks good though. Pro Comp wheels look nice in the sun. It's really not that windy today, which is nice. When it comes to the Antelope Valley, man, never get a day that's not windy. So the only thing now that, that I got the wheels on it like this is, this is loose. The truck's running right now, let's see. Get the truck off. And uh, how much, got a lot of looseness in the steering and when I'm, I took it for a test drive yesterday and I was driving straight like this and then all of a sudden I was driving straight like this and then it was, and then it was straight driving like this, so. Something's really, really loose up front. The uh, previous owner, previous owner told me that the truck has pretty bad death wobble. So uh, we'll take a look at the at the suspension and see. I already know what's causing the death wobble, but we'll take a look and see what we can think could be causing it. Yeah, man, I don't know why it's got death wobble, but. Uh, Seems like that lower eccentric might be missing. There's one reason. Okay, can I move the body of the truck? Okay, moving the body of the truck. I don't know if you can even see that, but the, the shock is like not even connected at the bottom. And I've already gone and bought new uh, tie rod, tie rod. Uh, up here's the drag link and the tie rod end for the drag link. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all the steering components on this. Okay. Just got back from the parts store. I got some pads and some tie rods and some uh, drag links. Go ahead and throw them back here. Got the, I got a panhard bar too. Panhard bar on this truck on the front end is really loose. Alright. 
Okay. Whew. A little bit heavy. Last but not least, some uh, front brake pads. Okay. So, let's see what all. There's all the parts I got from Napa. It's pretty much everything for the front end. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and open these boxes up and I'll show you what I got. All right, so I got all the parts here laid out in the bed. Start over here, I got uh, just some front brake pads, just some cheap $40 set. These, this is the drag link and drag link rod end, the one that has the eyelet for your steering dampener. And this is what connects to your steering box. We've got our outer tie rod, inner tie rod, and our, I can never remember, they call this the, the uh, it's a panar bar, but they call it a, they call it a drag link? No, they call it something else. Anyway, this is panar bar, so here's all the part numbers. These are all the part numbers I use, DS1309, DS1308, what's this one? DS1413, ES3247 and ES3249. We're going to see if all this fits and uh, get back to you. Alright, so I'm at the front of the truck here and I got everything kind of laid out. This is everything I'm replacing. So up here is our panhard bar. That connects from over here on the axle to over here on the body. That's what keeps this, the axle from twisting left and right. Okay, so then we've got our tie rod and outer tie rod assembly and then our drag link and outer tie rod drag link assembly. So what that is, is our steering assembly from this steering knuckle here up there to that, where's that steering box? So from the steering box down and then over there from that knuckle across. So all that's going to get replaced. That's what, uh, that's what's loose on this truck. And then I'm going to figure out how to fix that uh, eccentric washer and maybe I'll put some shocks on it. We'll go from there. All right, so I've gone ahead and pulled out all the cotter pins and the nuts on all of these ball joints that I'm going to be pulling. So this is the pan hard bar and the tie rods and the drag link. And then there's this one. I didn't do this one in the center because there's no point. I pulled my steering stabilizer off. The only thing I didn't buy, which I should have bought, were these um, center couplers. So I, once I get all this off, I'm going to have to pull these center couplers off with and clean them up with some WD-40 or something. And then should be able to put all the new stuff on. So I've got a hammer. I was going to take my hammer and I'm going to knock on this. I'm going to knock on that until the, oh, something fell. So I'm going to knock on those until they all come out and I'll see you guys in a second. There's our pan harp bar and our steering. Ugh. 
Okay, there it is. That's all the old, real crusty. Yeah, so I gotta pull these off. These adjusters here, and this one, oh wow, that's loose. So I gotta pull those off and put the new stuff on. So we'll come back to that. So unfortunately, the footage of me assembling all the suspension arms on the, or sorry, all the steering arms on the front of this truck got corrupt, but this is what it looks like fully assembled. So there's your adjustment. This is the inner and outer tie rod assembly. And then this is the drag link that goes from the passenger wheel up to the steering box. And this is our steering dampener. I didn't even change the dampener and I didn't change the shocks. I just uh, wanted to do, I wanted to get the death wobble fixed as cheap as possible. One of the main issues I had on this truck was my panhard bar ball joint was bad. And because this has a lift kit, this is like a drop mount. It's an aftermarket drop mount that, uh, how do I, here we go. That mounts to the center subframe, goes around and, and braces here. And then there's a big drop because it's lifted. Anyway, so a lot of this had, had become loose. This bolt, this bolt in here, there's another bolt on the side. And then the two bolts here, they were all loose. And so this entire bracket tree was kind of wobbling so that was causing a lot of the the steering wheel when you would drive it would be straight and then it would be upside down and you'd still be driving straight so tightening that up and putting a new pan hard bar on really helped me in my situation and then I'll show you the eccentric bolt um, it's right here so the previous somebody removed the bolt or lost the bolt on a trail or who knows. Um, so I went to Napa or O'Reilly's and this is the one that they had that said that this was the part number for the truck. To me it looks a little small, looks to be a little bit the wrong size. However, it got me home. I'm happy. The truck performed well. All right guys, so that's the whole front end fully assembled. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for part two of me actually road tripping this car, this truck from Los Angeles home. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy that. Please leave a like, comment, and a subscribe. Look at this monster truck. Hardly even fits in my garage. All right. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video, part two. Stay tuned.